Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. It's Friday, the 20th of October, and I want to just humbly apologize. I had to reboot my system. There was some sort of technical issues, so it took me longer to log in. Thank you for being patient. Um, my name is Russell Shaw. I'm a senior market specialist at FXCM, and my email address is rshaw at fxcm.com. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the uh, disclaimers. We'll start off with the high risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey, James. Good morning to you. Good morning, Howard. Nice to have you on the webinar. All right, I'm just going to bring up the market commentaries disclaimer. <clears throat> hey, Raj, good morning to you. Okay, thank you very much. And let's just bring up our references. Here is the uh, MarketScope 2.0 reference and the TradingView.com. We'll go through to TradingView to start as we usually do. And um, we'll take a look at our rate. Now, um, Fetcher Powell did speak at the Economic Club of New York yesterday. Um, he had some interesting things to say. Um, number one, it seems there's going to be a pause for the November 1 meeting, the October 31 November 1 meeting. I don't think that's a surprise. Um, he reiterated they're going to be data dependent, um, but he also um, suggested higher for longer, which I think is what we what we're seeing in the real rates. Um, so uh, very interesting. Uh, the, there is a, a pullback. There's a there's a pullback, uh, so to speak, in the real race today. You can see this red candle, um, and uh, perhaps that dominates the uh, the trade for today. Hey, Katie. Good morning to you. Um, so the idea here is, let us just consider uh, the greenback, the U.S. dollar, given the fact that there does seem to be some sort of pullback in the real yield. Is that reflecting? Uh... Hey, Katie. Yeah, I did, I did get your email. I, were, I, I, uh, I was going to get a rep to call you. They, the rep said they'll call you. Has anyone called you yet? Let me just know. Okay. Um, All right, let, let's just go ahead and um, let's go ahead and take a look at the Ustala. Okay, I'll, I'll follow up there, KD. Let me just make a note of that. All right, let's just go ahead and uh, bring up the uh, US dollar. We'll take a look at Tesla as well, just as a as an exercise, but I first want to consider the US dollar given the fact that the real rate seems to be coming down. And um, let's just go through to the daily chart here. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, there is some blue, there's some blue today. Uh, yesterday's dollar candle, it does show uncertainty. It's a spinning top, isn't it? Uh, we've got bulls that try to take price up. Bears that try to take price down, but effectively it was a uncertain day. Um, there is still some positivity with yesterday's candle. You've got an upper, sorry, a higher high, and you've got a higher low. So there is um, sort of a movement up. Uh, we're trying to uh, regain zone one here. Um, if we go through to the hourly chart, let's just take a look at the resistance support levels here. Okay, let's clean it up. All 
All right, so what's happening here, which I think is quite interesting, and something that we're going to have to watch, um, is uh, I think there is a selling tail here. Well, I can't see there's a selling tail, but why I say uh, it's um, an interesting setup is because we do have the EMAs in uh, bull mode. So you can see that the, uh, the EMAs have crossed positively, you can see that the stochastic has crossed positively and the stochastic is making its way through to the upper quintile. And um, if it holds in that upper quintile, then I think uh, the momentum carries on. What I think we have to watch for here, but I, and again, the, I think the, uh, we have to sort of finesse this, um, if that's the right way to describe it, um, the real rate coming down, the real rate coming down, I think that might influence the dollar. And I think that's why we have that selling tail that uh, started to appear here. If we get a bearish cross on the dollar and we get a bearish cross on the stochastic, um, that would be to me a a little bit more comfortable because it's aligning up with the way the rates seem to be um, heading this morning. And of course, um, once the rates and the dollar lines up, I think it makes um, uh, life for us a little easier as traders. The problem is sometimes there's a divergence, sometimes they um, break from one another. Um, we've seen early in the week the real rates go up and we saw the, uh, the dollar come down there was that sort of divergence in what we um, would expect uh, if that um, happens again today it will make the trading environment more complex for us as traders so um, ideally ideally a, 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 and sort of in line with our current methodology uh, the real rate the key driver here um, now, if there's going to be uh, some sort of um, movement down on the US dollar, we should expect a movement up in Euro. So let's just take a look at that as well. See if that is uh, potentially on the cards. Okay, so here we have Euro. So I'm just going to mute for a moment. I just want to clear my throat. I'm begging your pardon. Okay, um, what we have here is a dragonfly doji. So there is some bullishness coming in. It looks as if the central pivot here has got um, some support qualities to it. But again, we want to see the we want to see the EMAs cross over to the upside and start uh, developing that angle and separation to the, the upside. At the same time, we would want to see a crossover in the stochastic. And um, what I would suggest is that if we get the euro US dollar moving up, US dollar moving down, we start to uh, align with the direction of the real rate. It would seem to me then we probably uh, tilting towards the risk on day. We're tilting towards the risk on day. Whether it maintains or not, we're going to have to wait and see. But, um, you know, the markets have been uh, hammered, uh, I think. Um, so I think uh, there could be a sort of a, a, an oversold condition. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, some of the uh, indices and see if that's a fair assessment for us. Let's start off with the, let's start off with the US um, indices. Let's just take a look at NASDAQ. Again, it's not the greatest chart, okay? It's not the greatest chart. If we bring up NASDAQ, you can see that uh, we've got that lower peak, lower trough. We're monitoring it according to the 30-week exponential moving average. We've got our downsloping, a trend line as a yardstick as well. 
And this is a weekly chart. You can just see how the NASDAQ's really been uh, hit quite severely uh, this week. Um, let's just uh, let's just add an RSI in here to the to the um, to the hourly. Okay, let's just add an RSI here, uh, just to give us an idea of um, how uh, uh, deep the RSI is and if it is in fact oversold. So let's just bring that up. All right, so it's it's not oversold, uh, but it it does look as if uh, the RSS may be looking to kick up. Um, it's not under 20. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's just, what I'm thinking, okay, what I'm thinking is that the uh, real rate is um, a good way for us to be guided. Uh, let's just go down to uh, the hourly on the real rate, see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got this big push down over the last hour. Okay, going back to NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ, we've got the low peaks, lower troughs, low peak, lower troughs. Um, it does look as if it is trying to cross into zone three. Um, it does seem to be an underlying momentum there. I think by and large the Nasdaq is looking quite weak. I hesitate. I hesitate just because of that uh, pull down in the real rate. I think that that has to be monitored for the rest of the day and if we get a, a maintenance of that decline in the real rate, mm, I think we might see um, the, I think we might see zone two holding and if we get zone two holding, um, you know, then we might get some sort of movement up here. You know, I've got to be honest with you, uh, it's hypothetical, it's speculative, it's been driven by the fact that uh, the real rate has moved down. If we get the real rate doing something like this, if we get the real rate doing something like this, Okay, all bets. Then, then I then I would reverse that um, that hypothesis. Then I would say, no, the uh, the risk uh, instead of tilting towards that risk on, we're starting to tilt towards that risk off. So I'm using the real rate uh, today as uh, effectively um, a um, a key driver of the market. Uh, Let's just go down to the dollar because the, the markets have opened. Let's just see how the dollar is reacting. If we do have that um, selling tail still on it. Okay, just waiting for the US dollar to come up. All right, so. Um, it started off, we've got a fairly um, benign open this morning, uh, a very small candle. So I think, again, keep an eye on the um, inverted hammer. If the inverted hammer dominates, uh, again, I would suggest we have that tilt towards risk on. One, um, one last chart I want to just take a look at is Tesla, because we did look at Tesla yesterday. We did suggest it's probably going to be some weakness. Uh, this is actually a gap. Um, my, my chart has drawn a long candle. This is actually a gap down. Um, what you can take a look at, you can see how the um, it's broken out of the symmetrical triangle. It's broken below the 30-week uh, exponential moving average, and that exponential moving average is starting to round downwards. Also, you can see that the RSI is starting to dip below 50. So that, to me, it uh, looks like it had to be monitored. Um, it looks like we're getting um, a change in the technical direction here. So let's just keep an eye on Tesla. 
Okay. Uh, again, I want to just apologize that um, we started late this morning. Uh, just had a reboot uh, the laptop, but all good now. If there's any questions, uh, just go ahead and type those in. Any questions? Okay. Nothing coming through. Okay, guys, have a great day, great weekend ahead, and we shall chat again on Monday. Thanks very much, guys.